This vehicle is a 1974 Jeep J20, and uh, it is started as a piece of junk that my cousin bought for a thousand bucks. Texted me and said, "Hey, what's this worth?" And I said, "A thousand bucks." He's like, "Good. That's all I paid for it. Let's do something with it." And uh, we created what we think is something really awesome with it, one of a kind, and uh, iconic piece of of history preserved for a long time, yet making it one of a kind and not something you see every day. And at first I was like, oh, I don't know, I mean, I, I love the front end, it had the Razor grill on it, which is okay, but the iconic Rhino grill was my favorite, and you know, a few months went by and you know, we were looking at another build to do and we kind of circled back around and said, you know what, I think we can make something out of this. It was a long bed, Jeep J20 and uh, a lot of blood, sweat and tears, <laughs> almost literally with uh, all of the hours and labor of love that we had to put into this thing. I mean, we tore it down to the frame and actually re reinforced the frame where they had weak points, had it powder coated, so full frame off restoration. And then we wanted to make it one of a kind, we wanted to make it special, so we actually bobbed the back end about 13 and a half inches and then we totally cut the whole leaf spring, leaf spring suspension out of it and updated it with a custom uh, LJ long arm kit and uh, actually kept the stock Dana 60 full float in the rear and kept the stock Dana 44 in the front and totally built it up. And then from there, we just you know wanted it to be more of an overland build. And uh, early on, we dubbed the, the truck the Tomahawk. And so Castle Fab not only did a lot of the, the fab work with the bobbing and the suspension, but he actually I actually bought a Tomahawk off Amazon. And he actually, uh, out of nothing, created a feather that it sits on and then took and hammered the, the head of the, of the Tomahawk down for the for the hood quarter ornament. So it's just one of my favorite features of the vehicle. And then of course in the back where you open the tailgates, another tomahawk that's uh, like a hatchet stuck into the, into the side. And, um, and then inside we really just wanted to keep it really retro, yet have that new, new feel and, and uh, a little bit special. Um, so we kept the original power seats, re-upholstered them in black leather, a uh, little gray and black plaid headliner that was my little touch I wanted you know a little treat and look in and look up and, oh that's pretty cool and uh, we knew we wanted 40 inch tires kind of low center of gravity and we just wanted it with the long wheelbase to just drive great on the street so the end result we wanted to be able to take us on adventures with family or friends, wherever we wanted to go, reliable enough with the AMC 401, it just sounds amazing. And that's kind of the, the background story of where it started. I was actually shocked getting in, thinking, you know, I've had a lot of vintage vehicles and it does have a little longer wheelbase. It's gonna drive, you know, how vintage vehicles drive on the freeways. A little bit of romance, a little bit of, you know, drives like an old car, but one pinky on the wheel, straight as narrow down the road, it just cruises. I mean, it, it's reminiscent of some newer Jeep vehicles that I've owned, and it's just a pleasure to drive, and it just sounds really throaty and really good with its, its exhaust in the 401. It's just, uh, it's just a joy to drive. When you take and strip down a vehicle all the way to its frame, it, it's just, there's so many unknowns and so many hurdles you have to go across, so many timelines that you blow through and have to catch up on, on timelines and, and, and you know, hit different, different milestones. And looking back, the process of getting there, the process of, of thinking about how should we do this and where should this line be and how, how much should we take off the back and and how high should the suspension be? All of those fun design elements really is my my sweet spot. You know, the, the vision for the vehicle is I think the fondest memory of being able to, you know, again just express my creativity through this piece of history and the hunk of American iron. 
I just think being elbows up in grease is just part of my DNA. Ever since I was little, I was always a fix-it guy. I was always a problem solver. And uh, as an early teenage boy, my dad had a fabrication shop next to his business. And, you know, my dad's an expert with wood, and I got my hands on metal, and that was just a new birth for me, getting my hands on metal and shaping it, forming it, working with it. And then when I combined that with my love of Jeeps, and the end result is something that I got to not just give to a customer or look up on a wall, but I get to drive it, and it gets to take me places. That's as much why as I ever needed. And now having kids of my own, I get to take them with me and, you know, help them share in that experience of, what I built and what we can share it with together. Th there is no everything's all dial in with the, the old romance of vintage vehicles, but when it was to the point where we could turn the key, get in and drive it, the, the sight of it, the smell of it with that old American iron motor and the feel behind the wheel that it's taking me somewhere new, where can I go? Um, feeling of freedom, the smell of freedom, the look of freedom, all that kind of stuff. Just to have what I think is the most gorgeous looking lines and best designed front end that Jeep ever did. And I got to make it something my own. The payoff hit right then and there. I think that people are drawn to automobiles really by the connection that they feel with it. You, know, you ask my wife, it's a, it's a mode of transportation point A to point B, and that's okay. But you ask me or, or Tony and Jason, my partners in uh, Romer, I mean, we, it kind of exudes a little bit of your personality, and you have that connection when, when you walk out and see that's, that's what I like to drive. It doesn't have to be the biggest and best, it's, and you can share it with other people and what they've done and the camaraderie of community and then pulling people together and the adventures for family. I think that people like to connect to their vehicles. Whatever that connection may be, I really think the, the core of it is the connection that they find with it.